In today's Leeds news, Under-21's back in European action, Ben Godfrey update, Leeds injury update, Leeds leading the race for fullback, Farkas says January is busy, and Firpo the happiest he's been at Leeds. Hiya folks, Jay here on Thursday the 25th of January with your Leeds United news. Just first things first, a quick apology for yesterday's video. I had a couple of sponsors calls yesterday who wanted to uh, get involved with the channel. Unfortunately, nothing concrete came out of that. Um, I have two rules of the channel. I won't do gambling sponsorships um, and I won't do anything to do with cryptocurrency as well. And unfortunately, the payment method was crypto. So uh, I've stepped away from that one, but we'll see. There is openings for the channel for sponsorship, but uh, at the moment, I want to make sure it's the right one that fits the channel. I don't want to do anything that I don't believe in. So that's that. Um, so we'll crack on and get back into the news. There's a lot of stuff floating around after another good win for Leeds United last night and not a great performance by Leeds, a leggy looking performance, especially in the second half, but a professional performance, which has been said a lot this year in grinding at a 1-0 win. It could have been more, we had good chances we could have scored two or three more but we didn't we've been a bit wasteful in front of goal so far it's not catching up on us and the gap to the top two well the second place team is now two points Leeds could go second before Southampton and Ipswich kick a ball yet as well right cracking on with the news and we'll start off with the under 21 side and they are back in European action tonight Leeds United under 21s will take on PSV Eindhoven in the Premier League International Cup PSV are the reigning champions of the competition and both sides are joint top of their group at the moment with PSV slightly ahead of Leeds with one goal difference better. Uh, the game will be at the LNER Community Stadium tonight, 7pm kickoff, and is available on LUTV as well. Leeds will be looking to put the defeat last time out to bed with a win in the European competition, which has gone really well for Leeds so far, and it's great for the players to get the exposure against good players. PSV Eindhoven will be a challenge. It'll be a tough game and could be a really entertaining watch tonight at 7pm. Uh, moving on, let's talk about Ben Godfrey and the updates around him. There's been a lot of news around Ben Godfrey over the last couple of days. Fabrizio Romano talking about Genoa being involved. There was a loose link to AC Milan getting involved with it as well. And Leeds being consistently mentioned with a move for the player. Everton's off-field problems is also being touted as a possible issue. But however, uh, speaking from the Yorkshire Evening Post, Graeme Smith says that he doesn't believe that the off-field issues at Everton will stop Leeds making a move and striking a deal for the player this Month. Graham Bailey has also had his say on this and he said that he thinks Leeds have a genuine interest in the player and he's, he thinks business could still be done with Leeds this month despite everything going on off the field with Everton. Everton already have a 10 point deduction for failing a financial fair play rule and they're now in a second um, independent regulator meeting about a potential second points deduction which could cause problems for them 7-7 partners are also struggling financially as well with a couple of their clubs around the world not in great nick so there's a lot going on off the field but according to bailey but according to bailey he says the problem is actually convincing ben godfrey that he would play for leeds if they signed daniel farkas lack of rotation in the squad and usage of his subs this season that just could be because he doesn't trust the bench or he doesn't think that the level he needs them at but all of that together means that Ben Godfrey is sceptical about game time at Leeds should he come. It's unlikely that he would shift Joe Rodon, who's been an absolute rock this season. And Archie Gray, if he moves out to a fullback position, has been in excellent form there as well. Leeds also looking at a right back as well. Fabrizio Romano has also shared news on this yesterday and he said that Serie A side Genoa are firm interest and have made a move for Godfrey. Godfrey, he said that the £68,000 per week that the player is on are the issue for Genoa. There's not a huge amount of money floating around in Italy at the moment and I would look at bringing Godfrey in to join up with former Leeds like Loney Jed Spence who had a decent debut for them as well in his tweet he said that Genoa are interested in the player and direct talks between them and Everton have taken place but that Everton expect a better proposal to come in in the next couple of days that better proposal could be from Leeds there is rumoured to be some serious interest in Leeds and talks going on but we'll have to wait and see there another bits and pieces that's floating around just it's not really a story but Sasha Tavalieri is doubling down on the manual Benson deal saying that Leeds will have a second round of talks for Benson it's uh, unlikely Southampton are very interested in the player as well we'll have to see if Sasha's exclusive ends up being an exclusive we'll find out over that in the next couple of days only seven days left in the window so we got to get moving uh, on the injury front Daniel Farka has given an update on yesterday's two concerning injuries with Dan James who clocked up another assist yesterday uh, that brings us to six assists in the season this year with 10 goals which is an incredible season for James but his injury 
Um, will worry people Archie Gray going off at right back is a big concern considering we still haven't signed a full back and we're letting them all leave we now have an injury to Archie Gray but Farka has given an update to fans after the game basically what he said is Dan James has a hip flexor problem it's not too bad but he will miss the game on Saturday against Plymouth in the cup but should be back soon Willie Nonto is due back for the game against Plymouth at the weekend so that could fill that hole on the Archie Gray situation he said initially he was concerned but on further investigation he is carefully optimistic that Archie will be okay he said the injury seems to be more of an impact injury with the tackle from Adam Ida being the problem it was a hard tough tackle and it's a compact impact injury with an overstretching of the knee as well and um, but Leeds really will need to get moving in the fullback situation uh, rapidly because if, if if it's a case that Sam Byron goes to right back to cover Junior Firpo and anything happens to Byron or Firpo we really are lacking in those positions big time uh, moving on then to the fullback situation, as we've just mentioned, and according to the Daily Mail, who've been pretty accurate with Leeds United news over the last six to eight months, they are claiming that Leeds are leading the race to sign Liverpool right back Calvin Ramsey. Ramsey is also being linked with a move to Southampton, who are said to be very, very interested in the player and was out on loan, an impressive loan spell at Preston for the first half of this season. Liverpool recalled the player and he is expected to go back out on loan. According to the Daily Mail, Last week, that they said that Leeds had a had an interest in the player and would make a move. Now, according to the latest updates, it suggests that Leeds have made a firm approach for Ramsey. Of all the Liverpool fullbacks that are there at the moment, Connor Bradley is the one that I would be excited about going after. But Calvin Ramsey is still a very good player. He's 20 years of age. He's very highly rated. And when he moved down from Aberdeen as well, Aberdeen had high hopes for him as well. And at Liverpool, they rate him incredibly highly as well and expect him to push for first team places in the future. So will be a good player to get in at this play at this stage. Not played a huge amount of football since he's gone back to Liverpool, but he should be still relatively sharp from the first half of the season, which would ease Daniel Farkas' worries about game time. Moving on, talking about Daniel Farkas and his comments on the January window, he has described the January window as busy despite Leeds' lack of action. Uh, speaking to Leeds Live after the game last night, he basically said that January is busy for Leeds and that additions will be needed with the club, with the squad being described as particularly small at the moment. Farkas said, I know January is busy, our squad is small at the moment, James and Gray are struggling today, that's added to our injuries. Leeds are currently without Archie Gray, Dan James, Willie Nyanto, Pascal Stroke as well. There are some concerns there. Um, knocking around Joe Rowland took a couple of knocks last night and looked like he was going to go down as well. Liam Cooper came on the last couple of minutes. So there are some concerns at the back for Leeds right now. And with a couple of days left in the window, Leeds would want to get moving on those if they can. And then the final story today is around Junior Firpo. Firpo's resurgence as Leeds United left back continues after another very, very good attacking performance from the player. He almost clocked up another assist last night with a beautiful ball for Pat Bamford who delayed his attempt at an overhead kick would have been a cracking goal if he'd scored it. The 27-year-old continues to be linked with a move away from Leeds though however this month with Real Sociedad being the latest club mentioned as an interest in the player. However, a move away from Leeds seems increasingly unlikely with Leeds' lack of depth in the fullback positions and also the fact that his form and fitness have continued to improve. The £13 million player is having his best run of form for Leeds under Daniel Farke who has gotten a couple of really strong performances out of a couple of players who may have looked at their struggle to start a season likes of Dan James, likes of Junior Firpo. Um, and the likes of Chris Somerville coming into his own this year as well. Speaking with BBC Radio Leeds, Firpo said that it's the happiest he's been since joining Leeds. He pointed out that he had spoken to the official Leeds podcast earlier this month. And what he had said to them was that moving to a different country, playing in and out injuries was a concern. He said playing in a different country, everything was different as well. The injuries didn't help. But he also pointed out the criticism from the fans was hard to take and didn't help the situation. But he said it brings your confidence down. He went on to say that it's a really good team that Leeds have here at the moment, not just in players, but in, as human beings as well. And he said it's really helped him. It's the happiest he has been at Leeds since he joined. The £13 million player has had 61 games for Leeds in his two and a half years at the club, which isn't great, but he looks like he might be sorting out his fitness issues. We should also point out and caveat all of this by saying... This is the championship still, and we're talking about your football as an attacking player here, more so than a defensive player. There are still question marks about defensive capability. Um, and I will just double down on saying criticisms in the past of Junior Firpo are based on performances in the past. Praise in the current is based on performances in the current as well. So there is, you know, caveats that great performances now don't fix bad performances before and bad performance in the past 
shouldn't reflect on good performances now as well. So, yeah, praise and criticism in equal measure when it's um, applicable. Right, that's going to be it for me today, folks. Massive thanks, as always, for sticking with me and watching the channel. There will be a live stream probably on deadline day as well for the last hour, as we normally do. We'll keep that going as well. And that's going to be it for me today, folks. Have a cracking rest of your day and week, and I'll see you tomorrow morning for more Leeds News. See you then. Bye.